What's going on everybody? So in this video, we are going to be talking about what's going on in the NFT markets, the most expensive skateboard sale in history, as well as Reddit moving into NFTs. All right, first thing we're going to talk about is what's going on in the crypto markets right now. For the most part, everything is moving sideways. We see Ethereum at that 1.35 kind of level. So for the most part, everything kind of consistent. So not too bad during a bear market. As long as it doesn't crash, that is okay with me. But what I really want to talk about is what's going on in NFTs right now. A lot of the top projects right now are going to be these reddit nfts we see number two spooky season over here we see the sense reddit collaboration Fosslings reddit collaboration so a lot of reddit collaborations going on right now so reddit has been working on nfts for quite a bit they actually sold their first nft over a year ago and they constantly been building 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 and now they have something that's more for the mainstream market right and as you know when it comes to reddit they don't actually market their nfts as nfts they call them digital collectibles because the web 2 world people who are using reddit and people who are into gaming and things like that they really have a negative stigma towards nfts but i personally believe that NFTs are the future, so they have to do a whole rebranding and call it a digital collectible. So a digital collectible is essentially using their Reddit logo and creating these avatars that people can use as their PFP on Reddit. And Reddit is giving an opportunity for people to kind of own the community, meaning that instead of just earning these like karma points and things like that, you can't really do anything with karma points. It's just kind of like a flex in a way, right? But with NFTs and blockchain technology, all the work that you put into your community, all your engagement, just helping people out, creating content, like user generated content, now you can actually be rewarded in some way and get some kind of digital asset and essentially be able to sell it to another person if there's demand for it, right? And so instead of just doing something for free karma points, people are actually getting rewarded for the things that they already do and they can actually sell it for Polygon or Ethereum or whatever cryptocurrency they want, right? And so for Reddit, you know, they collaborate with different artists and they create a different collection. So that's why, you know, you see these different collections over here in the future because there's so many people using Reddit, you know, they can constantly pump out different collections for different niches within Reddit, right? Because there's a lot of communities and they're gonna be able to make massive revenue over the long run. So when we look at these projects right now full slings reddit it's on polygon so when you see the purple emblem that kind of looks like ethereum that's going to be polygon and so this thing launched in august 19th right so it actually has been quite a while and there's been a few sales and it's pretty much worth nothing right but over time these things started just exploding and more and more people are talking about it especially on crypto twitter so you see on october 24th which is the time of this recording we've had 88 sales and the price is pumping up now you got to be careful because just because the price is pumping up doesn't mean that is an opportunity to buy in fact maybe it's too late to buy in some senses right but you have to kind of look at it see what the sentiment is and see whether or not it will continue to go up but is this thing really worth that much well it's kind of dangerous when prices move really fast because we've seen with other projects in the past coordinated pumps do happen a lot of whales buy something and create a narrative and get people to fomo in and, and sell it to them as exit liquidity so that's usually how the game goes and so i kind of worry that you know all these web 2 people who use reddit and going into buying these things if they fomo into this thing maybe they're gonna have a bad taste in their mouth the price is dumped but overall i would say still bullish for the space and you even see like reddit is doing a zero percent creator fee on OpenSea, which is quite interesting i saw a tweet by 9gag ceo reddit has created 3 million wallets which is more than openc which only has 2.3 million wallets that's really just a small fraction of all the reddit users because there's 430 million monthly active users on the entire platform right and so we are on the path of onboarding people into web3 it's just gonna take time but yeah getting like 60, 0.69 percent of hundreds of millions of people to use your nfts is pretty good especially because you know you kind of take out that whole stigma of nfts and flexing and stuff like that and just getting the regular people who just want to enjoy their online communities and jump into this stuff. All right, so the next project we're going to talk about is going to be Azuki. Now, Azuki has been doing some innovative things when it comes to that physical and digital and putting it together, right? So the first project that they're working on is going to be the Azuki Golden Skateboard, and they did this by doing an auction, right? So essentially, they are selling eight skateboards. Whoever pays the most money are able to get this skateboard. So when I first heard of this, right, me and my friends were talking about this, and we were like, oh, you know, how much do you think that people are willing to pay for the skateboard? My guess was 100 ETH. Of it, my friends were like 200 ETH. But in the end, the highest bidder is going to pay 309 ETH and the lowest bidder is going to pay 200 ETH, which is very surprising because if you think about it right now, 200 ETH at the time of this recording is going to be $270,000 and then 309 ETH is going to be $418,000. So it's definitely a lot for a digital skateboard and a physical skateboard. Why are people spending so much money on this skateboard, right? First of all, the people that are buying it probably have a lot of money and maybe a few hundred thousand dollars is nothing to them relative to how much they have. So you have to understand it's all relative, right? For other people, like $300,000 is a lot of money for other people it's like you know something fun and something exciting so you definitely have to keep that in mind that this is a luxury product and in the luxury space all these guys already have money right it's like buying a picasso painting yes it's going to be expensive but the reason why people get it is because it's saying like hey my status is higher than yours because i have something that you can't get that's essentially how his kind of luxury things work i think the first thing is that when it comes to this kind of technology and azuki kind of pioneering this whole physical digital space this is the first product so in a bear market if people are willing to pay this price for a skateboard and you get an nft and you get the little badge on azuki 
suzuki.com for your profile. Maybe it's something that people will want historically, right? Maybe this is something that people will look back on and maybe this will be worth a lot more than people bought it for, right? That's definitely a possibility. It could definitely go down in price. And a lot of times people collect these things with no intention to sell as well. So you definitely want to keep that in mind. From my perspective as a marketer and someone who also helps projects, I would see this really interesting because Azuki pretty much proved the model that they can actually sell product during a bear market. As long as they know that their target audience has money, it doesn't really matter where their market is as long as people are willing to pay for something, right? I can see in the future that, you know, right now it's this golden skateboard that's going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars. But then obviously there's going to be other high-end products and probably mid-tier products and even lower tier products as well, right? Could it be in the future that can buy a physical toy of a bean and then it's going to cost you $100 and then you get an NFT with that, right? And I think these kind of revenue models make a lot of sense because, you know, if you want mainstream adoption, you can't just sell expensive stuff to people all the time. You need the regular person to be able to afford something, that little taste of luxury. And that is definitely proof that this is working even during a bear market, right? So if this is working in the bear market, imagine what it would be in a bull market when everybody in your grandma is buying NFTs, right? And so I think that's pretty bullish for a space. And anybody who's doing physical products, I think they should actually look into NFTs and see how they can implement this technology because this technology is open source. Anybody could use it for free, right? That's definitely something I would suggest like most e-commerce people at least study about, right? And if you are someone like that, make sure to check out PXL Labs where I actually advise and help clients get onboarded into Web3. Link is in the description, pxllabs.co if you want to learn more about how I might be able to help you. So the next project we're going to talk about is going to be Artifact and their collaboration with Ramoa. Now, like I said before, the physical and digital space really works really well when it comes to NFTs, right? Especially for luxury brands, people selling things that with high margin and selling it to people with a lot of money who don't really care if they spend thousands of dollars on product, right? So now that we're going on the website, you know, this is pretty much what it looks like. You're going to see these little robots over here and this large robot over there. So what is going on here? So what they're doing is they're introducing a lore to kind of tell a story. So it's not just selling product, but emotionally getting people to buy into this thing. And then can you use this robot in the metaverse or can it be imported into different worlds where you have the 3D files? I'm not really clear on that. It doesn't really say, but when you scroll down a little bit more, you see these other things called the worker bots. And so worker bots are going to be these avatars that you can actually use in AR, in virtual reality and augmented reality, right? So there's gonna be 0.08 Ethereum for this worker bot that you can actually equip a skin vial. So this is interesting because uh, Artifact created the skin vial. Uh, essentially you take this and you put it into a sneaker and then it kind of changes the skin of the sneaker. But with this, you can probably buy this thing and then use your skin vial and use it on this so that it can have your specific skin. And then the luggage itself is gonna be 2.3 ETH for this Artifact Remoa collaboration. You're gonna get the NFT, you're gonna get the physical product. And actually, if you look on the Remoa website, their suitcases cost like thousands and thousands of dollars. So actually these prices aren't actually too far fetched from what they have already been selling, right? You know, with that said, what are the learning lessons when it comes to that Azuki skateboard and this Remoa artifact collaboration? For me personally, I definitely can see a future where people will launch like PFP projects and then that's gonna be the base or Genesis collection, right? And then from there, they gotta figure out how to make revenue. And one of the best ways to do it is actually e-commerce. So selling product consistently. So whether it's by seasons or limited edition drops, like how Supreme does it, I think this model really works well for these high margin luxury slash premium category, right? You know, someone's gonna be the next Supreme for Web3 where they're gonna sell product and NFTs at the same time. And so I can definitely see like all these brands are kind of using that strategy, limited edition, high prices, you get NFT collectible, and then somehow these NFTs all work with each other, right? So like this one with the worker bot, you're gonna be able to use your artifact skin vial on your worker bot so that, you know, the NFTs and product that you buy one year ago, right? They're gonna find a way to like make them valuable in the future by allowing you to combine them. And that just makes it more interesting from e-commerce perspective, right? So it's not just about buying product and that's it. It's like buying a product, getting a digital collectible, connecting with the community, having conversations of how these collectibles will interact. And then like, it's just making commerce a lot more exciting than it was previous before NFTs were around. And so with that said, that is everything we got to cover for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give a like, subscribe, and make sure to follow me on Twitter at Patrick Dang. And by the way, if you are a Web2 business or someone who wants to build a Web3 project, make sure to check out our advisory where we're going to help you strategize and launch your NFT project. So check it out at plxlabs.co. Link is also in the description and I will see you in the next one.